Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungso, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, the readings today call us to repentance that leads to reconciliation. May this celebration of the Holy Eucharist bring us to reconciliation with God and to one another. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this Holy Mass, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. 
A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, heard the Lord saying to me, To the angel of the church in Sardis write this, The one who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars say this, I know your works, that you have the reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen what is left, which is going to die. For I have not found your works complete in the sight of my God. Remember, then how you accepted and heard. Keep it and repent. If you are not watchful, I will come like a thief, and you will never know at what hour I will come upon you. However, you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled with garments. They walk with me dressed in white because they are worthy. The victor will thus be dressed in white, and I will never erase his name from the book of life, but will acknowledge his name in the presence of my Father and of his angels. Whoever has ears ought to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the angel of the church in Laodicea write this, the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the source of God's creation says this, I know your works. I know that you are neither cold or hot. I wish you either cold or hot. So, because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. For you say, I am rich and affluent and have no need of anything, and yet do not realize that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may be rich and white garments to put on, so that your shameful nakedness may not be exposed, and by ointment to smear on your eyes, so that you may see. Those whom I love, I reprove and chastise. Be earnest, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, then I will enter his house and dine with them, and he with me. I will give the victor the right to sit with me on my throne, as I myself first won the victory and sit with my father on his throne. Whoever has ears ought to hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will sit the victor beside me on my throne. I will sit the victor beside me on my throne. He who walks blamelessly and does justice who thinks the truth in his heart and slanders not with his tongue. I will sit the victor beside me on my throne. Who harms not his fellow man, nor takes up a reproach against his neighbor, by whom the reprobate is despised, while the honors those who fear the Lord. I will sit the victor beside me on my throne who lends not his money at usury and accepts no bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be 
disturbed. I will sit the victor beside me on my throne. Please stand. God loved us and sent His Son as expiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Now a man there named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector and also a wealthy man, was seeking to see who Jesus was. But he could not see him because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. When he reached the place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. And he came down quickly and received him with joy. When they saw this, they began to grumble, saying, He has gone to stay at the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Behold, half of my possessions, Lord, I shall give to the poor. And if I have extorted anything from anyone, I shall repay it four times over. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a descendant of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, we heard from our Gospel passage today the story of the conversion of Zacchaeus. But in the story, what made the conversion of Zacchaeus authentic? Nakita po natin ang kwento ng pagbabago, pagbabalik loob ni Zacchaeus. Ano nga ba ang ginawa ni Zacchaeus kaya naging totoo ang kanyang pagbabalik loob? The conversion of Zacchaeus was authentic because he returned what he has stolen. Jesus is teaching us today that repentance is authentic when there is restitution and reparation. Tinuturo po sa atin ni Jesus ngayon, 
totoo ang pagbabalik loob kapag ibinalik mo rin kung ano ang ninakaw mo. Kapag hindi mo binabalik yung kinuha mo at nagsorry ka lang, totoo ba yan? Baka hanggang salita lang ang sorry mo. Hindi mo naman ibinalik yung kinuha mo. Kaya nga, totoo ang pagbabalik loob ni Sakeyo sapagkat ibinalik niya kung ano ang kanyang ninakaw. And Jesus teaches us also today that this is not just about repayment of what you have taken, but it is also reconciliation with the family of God. That is why Jesus, towards the end of the gospel today, tells us, this man, he said, Zacchaeus, is also a descendant of Abraham. Salvation has come to his house. Ang pagbabalik ng kinuha ay hindi lamang pagbabayad ng utang. Ito rin ay pagbabalik ng ating ugnayan para kang bumabalik sa iyong pamilya. Nagiging isang pamilya muli tayo. That is why whenever we confess our sins, there is penance in the end. It teaches us that true conversion comes with reparation and restitution. That is why in our first reading today from the book of Revelation, the messenger of God reveals to us the call of God to repentance. And when we answer the call to repentance, God said, Behold, I am knocking at your door, and when you hear my voice, I will open the door, and you will enter again the house and dine with me. Repentance leads to restitution, which also leads us to full reconciliation with God. Handa na po ba kayong mag-sorry sa mga nagawa natin ng kasalanan? Kung handa na tayong magsabi ng sorry sa mga sinaktan natin, kailangan handa ka rin ibalik kung ano ang kinuha mo. Kailangan handa ka rin ayusin yung sinira mo. Halimbawa, mayroon kang pinakalat na balita tungkol sa isang tao. E mali naman pala yung balita mo. Chismis pala yan. Fake news pala yan. Sapat na ba ang mag-sorry ka? Uy, sorry ah. May pinakalat akong chismis sa'yo. Mali pala. Hindi sapat ang sorry. Puntahan mo yung mga sinabihan mo at sabihin mo, mali ang balita mo. Yan ang pagbabagong loob. Totoo ang paghingi ng sorry kapag itatama mo yung maling pinakalat mo, yung maling ginawa mo. Repentance is authentic when there is restitution and reparation. My dear brothers and sisters, as we continue this celebration of the Mass, let us heed the call to repentance. And may this repentance lead us to true and authentic conversion and reconciliation again with God and with one another. Amen. Please stand. In the meeting between our Lord and Zacchaeus, 
we see that true mercy is the most profound source of justice. We pray as sinners on behalf of sinners, but let our prayer express confident trust in God's divine mercy. For every petition, let us say, Divine mercy, bless us. Divine mercy, help bless us. That the Church may continue to welcome those who seek forgiveness and inner peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Divine, Divine mercy, bless us. That those who run business and industry may be generous and just. Let us pray to the Lord. Divine mercy, bless us. That we may be prepared to welcome the Lord whenever He comes into our lives and allow Him to make His home in us. Let us pray to the Lord. Divine mercy, bless us. That the sick may see in their trials and suffering the redeeming cross of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Divine mercy, bless, bless us. That the dead may be rewarded with everlasting happiness in the life of the world to come. Let us pray to the Lord. Divine, Divine mercy, bless, bless us. God, our Father, fill our hearts with your love. Give us your saving help when we fall and keep us always in your care. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in His fullness. For though He was in the form of God, He emptied Himself, and by the blood of His cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore He has been exalted above all things, 
and to all who obey Him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, 
O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am, am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a few important announcements. We invite everyone uh, this Sunday, uh, November 20, Christ the King Sunday at 8 a.m., we will be celebrating a Thanksgiving Mass for the uh, seven years of service that Father Reginald Malikdem has given us as rector of the Manila Cathedral. The Sunday 8 a.m. Mass this Sunday will be also the last Mass of Father Reggie here at the Manila Cathedral. So we invite everyone to join us in thanking him and also saying our farewell to him as he transfers to his new assignment. In that Mass also, this Sunday, 8 a.m. Mass, we will also celebrate a thanksgiving for the appointment of our new rector, Monsignor Rolando de la Cruz. And in that Mass also, we will welcome our new priest administrator while we are waiting for the arrival of Monsignor Roli, Father Bong Bayaras. So it is a Thanksgiving Mass. Thanksgiving for the past seven years of Father Reggie as our rector. Thanksgiving Mass for the new priests who will be coming here at the cathedral, Monsignor Roli and Father Bong. Also, Father Reggie is extending his invitation to everyone for his first Mass in Landmark Chapel in Makati as the mission station priest there, the chaplain of that chapel. His first Mass there will be on November 23, Wednesday at 5.30 p.m., 5.30 in the afternoon. So Father Reggie is extending his invitation for us to join him in his first Mass there as the mission station priest in Landmark Chapel. Let us now all stand and receive the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Amen.